Hello. Hope you are very well and welcome to this quantitative reasoning class. Now we'll be looking at solutions for some quantitative reasoning questions. I want you to pay attention. So this is quantitative reasoning for pupils in grade four to six. Now let's look at this these samples, all right? So I have these samples here and I want you to observe these samples and study them. Then you should be able to figure out each number in the sample. All right, so now I have something like this. I'll be drawing a diagram like this. All right, and the second one will also look like it. Okay, so below this diagram, I have a V shape. Okay, so in the first one, I have six on the left, six at the middle, and 30 on the right. Then the next one, I have seven at the left, 14 at the middle, and 35 on the right. Now, let's look at these two samples. I want you to take note that whatever method you apply to the first sample must be the same method that will go with the second sample. If the method you're applying to the first sample does not go with the second sample, then that method is not correct. So whatever we do to the first sample, must the three samples must follow the same thing or the two samples must follow the same thing. But if you see that the method you apply in the first one isn't going for the second sample, then that method needs to be abandoned. Then you think about another way to figuring out a particular number all right okay now how can we figure out number 30 all right and how can we figure out 35 now this is what i have been able to discover i've discovered that if we square now to get 30 let's take the square of the first six in this first diagram it means if we find the square of six it means six raised to power two and that means 6 times 6, which is equal to 36, all right? Then we subtract the number at the middle. That's 6 from the 36. So that will be 36 minus 6. That will give us 30. Let's apply the same method to the second one, and let's see if we are going to get 35. So to get 35, take the square of 7. That's 7 raised to power 2 means 7 times 7, which is equal to 49. Then we need to subtract 14 in the diagram from 49. So that will be 49 minus 14. That will give us 35. Awesome. Which means the, the example or the method we apply to the first sample goes with the second sample to be able to figure out the number that is on the right side. Now let us Figure out the number that is at the middle of the sample. Now, how do we figure out number 6 and how do we figure out 14? So, we we'll say to get 6, which is at the middle, which is at the middle, we still go again to find the square of the 6 on the left side, which is equal to 6 times 6 equals 36. Then we subtract 30 that is on the right from 36. So that would be 36 minus 30. That is equal to 6. All right, so that's how to get 6 at the middle. Now, for the second sample, to get 14, you know, 14 is also at the middle. To get 14, what do we do? We apply the same method. Let's find the square of 7, which is equal to 7 times 7 which is equal to 49, then we subtract 35 on that is on the right side from 49. So that will be 49 minus 35, that's equal to 14. So we have been able to figure out the number at the middle. Now, how do we figure out the number that is on the left side? All right, that is to figure out 6 and to figure out 7. How do we figure it out? Now, to get 6, 
to get 6, which means we are going to add, all right? We are going to add 30 to the 6 at the middle. 30 plus 6 is equal to 36. Then we find the square root because initially we were to find the square. The opposite of square is square root. So we're going to take the square root. Then we find the square root of 36. To find the square root of a number means that to find that number, when you multiply it by itself two times, it will give you that number. So the number we multiply by itself is 6, 6 times 6. So which means the square root of 36 is 6. You just pick only one. All right, 6 times 6 gives us 36. We pick just a single 6. Now let's see, to get 7 on the left, all right, so we are going to add 35 on the right to 14, that is at the middle. That will give us 49. Then we take the square root of 49, right? We take the square root of 49. Which number do that will we multiply by itself to give us 49? That is 7. Since 7 times 7 is 49, so we just pick a single 7. It means 7 is the square root of 49. All right, so this is a simple step in treating this type of quantitative reasoning question. Most importantly, you just have to study how it was gotten. You need to figure out, that's why we call it quantitative reasoning. You need to reason it out, then you will be good. This is Learning Based Academy, and my name is Mrs. Adeolu Grace. Now, if you want more, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel or reach out to us on our WhatsApp number. And you'll be a mad champion. Have a wonderful time. Goodbye.